Stay till the end for a bonus. Subscribe for new stories every day. About 10 years ago, I took my dog out for a short walk. We lived in a run-down but historic part of town old houses that are either beautifully maintained, abandoned, or generally going to shit. There was a good mix of people in that neighborhood. Anyway, walking the dog, I get about three or four houses down and stop at the corner while Pony sniffs some grass or whatever. I turn around and suddenly there is a man standing way too close to me. No idea where he came from I'm usually very aware of my surroundings and Pony hated strange men. I stumbled a few steps back. I immediately had this absolute bone chilling sick feeling. He asked me, is that a pit bull? And I replied yes. Then he said, oh, she'll protect you. At this point, my body flooded with adrenaline and I turned to run back to my house. I saw my mom standing on the porch and thought to yell to her. She had no reason to come out on the porch, I honestly think she had a bad feeling. I don't know what good me yelling really did, but it was all I could think to do. Like, hey, look, I'm over here. I've never had such a flight response before or since that encounter. Story 2. When I was 16, my parents went out of town for a weekend. It was actually pretty sweet because I got to be king of the castle for the weekend. So I get home that Friday night and just dick around, internet, video games, etc., and start watching TV around dusk. The way our living room was set up was that there was a set of glass doors right next to the television that looked out to the back porch, backyard. The backyard was surrounded by ivy that grew on a hill around a 45 degree angle. So I'm just mindlessly channel surfing and I see some movement outside. At first I just dismiss it thinking it's a bird or a neighborhood cat or something, but I then notice that whatever is moving is way bigger than a bird or a cat. I go and put my face near the glass and stare into the backyard, and there's some dude just crouching in the ivy looking into the house. Our eyes meet and he has somewhat of an, oh shit, moment and bolts out of our yard. Scared the shit out me. Story 3. My mom had a stalker for years. She was maybe in her early 30s, I was about 3 and my brother was around 1 when this started. My dad would leave for work in the morning, and as soon as he was gone, the calls would start coming in. She'd answer the phone and some guy would be saying all this horribly sadistic and sexual things about what he wanted to do to my mom. She was beyond frightened and didn't know what to do. Sometimes the caller would describe what she was wearing at that very minute or describe what she was doing. My parents were struggling financially so they couldn't just up and move but my mom started spending more and more time at my dad's mother's house when he was away. The cops got involved but they couldn't trace the call. Finally, they were able to save up enough money to move. I was about six by this time. The phone number was changed and unlisted in the phone book. This was around 1988 when everyone still used landlines. My mom never got another scary phone call but she had nightmares about it for years. When I was little, I remember going into her bedroom in the morning and she would be sobbing into her pillow. I didn't understand it at that point but she explained later in life that she'd wake up from a nightmare and just shake and cry. A couple months after we had moved, the cops informed us that they finally caught the guy. It was our next door neighbor's 19-year-old son. He had been in the military but was discharged due to severe mental illness. I guess he was put into some sort of special security home that specializes in mental health. The lead investigator said that the son was obsessed with my mother and they found a box in his room full of a bunch of photographs candidly taken of her when she was out in the garden or playing with us kids in the yard. It chills me to the bone when I think about it now. Anything could have happened to my mother when my dad was at work and I'd be too young to help her. Story 5. On April 18th of this year, I came home from work and began working on some homework. After 30 minutes of homework my aunt entered my mother's bedroom and began screaming hysterically, ordering me to call 911. Once I was on the line with the operator, she asked what the nature of my emergency was. I didn't quite know so I entered my mother's bedroom to find her dead of a heart attack and laying face down on the floor, wedged between her nightstand and her bed. 
the operator dispatched the paramedics and instructed me on how to perform CPR. In order to do so, I had to flip my mother onto her back. When I grabbed my mother's cold, lifeless arm I realized that she couldn't be moved as she was wedged firmly between her bed and her nightstand and rigor mortis had already set in. I was unable to flip her over and I had never seen or touched a dead body before. After the paramedics came and told me that nothing could be done, the medical examiner informed my family that she couldn't be seen as she had been laying on her face for so long. It's assumed by my family that she hit her head on the way down as her dentures were on the floor beside her. The combination of her head trauma and the fact that she had been dead for many hours had rendered her unviewable, as deemed by the officer from the medical examiner's office. To answer your question, the sight and feeling of my mother's deceased body is the most chilling thing that I have ever seen. Her memorial is this Sunday. Edit. I really appreciate the condolences and heartfelt messages you've sent me. I'm proud to have a great support network, outside of the internet, full of people who have put themselves out there for me. I just started my move into my new home and will be sleeping there for the second time tonight. My new home is the spare bedroom of an old music teacher of mine. After his daughter and grandson moved out I've been fortunate enough to be offered a room free of charge to live in. This is an amazing opportunity, especially for a college student whose job only offers 20 hours a week. I hope only to be able to repay him for what he and his wife have done for me.